Wisconsin is home to a variety of cultures that have built up over the years. Olu, Wisconsin is home to one of the largest populations of Finnish people in the Midwest. At the Olu Heritage Center, you can find many historical buildings, ancient artifacts, and of course Finns themselves teaching about traditional building methods, recipes of tasty goods, and more as they preserve their culture. So Duane, this is pretty cool. Tell me about this Finnish cultural center known as Aulu. We started this project way back in uh, 1997. I was noticing that our heritage was disappearing. Our neighborhood was filled with 40 acre farms back when I grew up. There were very few of them left, so what we wanted to do was preserve some of those Finnish construction techniques and buildings and, and artifacts so the future generations would know what it was like here. It was predominantly a Finnish community when I grew up, probably 80%. It was really one of the three largest Finnish settlements in the state of Wisconsin. We all know Olu is number one, I think. Well, it's funny because the UP in this part of Wisconsin probably has the highest concentration of Finnish Americans of anywhere in the nation. So it is important to preserve the culture in this area. Tell me a little bit about the buildings around here. The house we're looking at over here, this was the cutover, the last of the big pinery. Mm -hmm. Late 1800s and the early 1900s. This was really the only land left up here that could be developed. It had been hacked over by the logging companies. So this is part of the finished construction techniques you're talking Correct. about? Correct, okay. absolutely, yep. All these houses back then, particularly in this area, were constructed with the full dovetail notch corners, all hand hewn. We've got about, actually about a dozen buildings right now. Mm -hmm. Started on that project restoration in 1997. This property has been in our family continuously for well over 100 years. My grandfather, who was a blaster in the mines, was very proficient at clearing land. My mother used to say you could tell when it was spring because you could hear the explosions going off all over the neighborhood. <laughs> all the farmers were blasting these stumps out so they could start farming here. In Finland, they practiced primogeniture, mm -hmm. which meant when the elders passed on, only the oldest son was able to inherit the property. You couldn't even own land unless you were the oldest son in Finland, so they immigrated over here to be able to own property. It was very, very important for them. So they farmed here and some industries were built around here too. Logging was a big industry here. After the big pinery was gone, logging continued with the second growth timber for many, many years. Now the people that live here work in the education profession and a lot of the technological places up there in the Twin Ports. So you have enough access to Duluth and Superior to be a place where people can live and still access their jobs there. Correct. Finnish phrases can be heard around the center, but one in particular has me curious. I keep hearing and seeing this phrase sisu, and I want to learn what it means. So I'll head over to the schoolhouse to find out more. Sisu is a Finnish term for determination, not giving up when things get tough. So it's a really good mental health attitude to have. But we like to try to instill that in our kids too. That's good, and with winter you need it sometimes. Absolutely. Right? So students are back here and they're actually cooking today. They are, yes. During our summer school sessions, we are passing on our traditional Finnish foods. Today we're serving moyaka, which is a Finnish beef stew, and a kala moyaka, which is a traditional fish stew. We also have pula, which is a cardamom bread, and some rieska. They're learning their culture, they're learning their cuisine, and they get to share it today here at Aulu Fest. Absolutely. I think I found some of my sisu here with Duane as I experienced the Finnish heritage of Ulu. You can find little bits of the world in all kinds of corners and pockets all over Wisconsin. So you speak Finnish yourself still? I still can get by. We've had many visitors from Finland that have stopped here. There's probably seven or eight of us in the community any longer that are fluent enough to speak Finnish. They can tell right away what part of Finland my ancestors came from just by the dialect that I use when I speak Finnish. Dwayne, how do you do one, two, three in Finnish? Ykskakskolame. Aulu is actually one of the larger cities in Finland. So it is pretty cool that there's an Aulu, Wisconsin that reflects that connection. Yes, and in fact, we've received inquiries from Olu, Finland, about establishing a sister city relationship with them. That's cool. Which is kind of exciting. But, uh, you know, I've, I've uh, cautioned them that it's a township and we've got about 400 people versus 300, 400,000 people over there in Olu, Finland. Yeah, Olu's about the size of Madison, so yep. it's just for scale. It's a very popular landmark, the Olu Rock. That was painted probably back in late 40s or early 50s. When it gets weather worn, people are quick to polish it up again and put a new coat of paint on it, and away we go. People know something about Olu when they see that rock. They know that it kind of gets us notarized. That's your call to attention for people driving on US too. Correct, yes. 
Typically, people get to see the whole township. When they turn at the Ola Rock, by the time they get back over to here, they pretty much tour the whole area because they, they make a wrong turn. So you get an accidental full tour of the township. Exactly. These yearly events center around the heart of celebration. Seeing family and friends at these events is a reunion for all those near and far as they share in story and freshly made food. This celebration of pride and Finnish heritage echoes in the next year where folks will keep building, educating, and always celebrating who they are.